It's Get Out of Here. I'm Warren Levinson. We're going to do this week's show a little bit backwards. If you've heard this podcast before, you know we usually talk about a destination or a series of destinations, then close with a feature we call My Favorite Trip, in which someone famous or quasi-famous or just interesting tells a travel story about a favorite trip or a cherished place from childhood. For this show, we'll do My Favorite Trip first. John Steinbeck, author of The Grapes of Wrath and East of Eden, among other 20th century American classics, published a wonderful travel book in 1962, the year he won the Nobel Prize for Literature. Travels with Charlie describes a journey Steinbeck took around the United States in a pickup truck he had outfitted with what we would now call a camper top, taking along his dog Charlie. So my favorite trip this week is a few lines from the beginning of that book. We're doing this because of an impending auction. John Steinbeck died in 1968, his third wife and widow Elaine in 2003. There have been quite a few auctions of the effects of the globe-trotting couple since then. Steinbeck wrote great mountains of letters, most of which have been published. So did Elaine, who had in fact been writing regularly to her mother in Fort Worth, Texas for years before she and Steinbeck met in 1949. And the centerpiece of this sale is scores of pictures she took and handwritten letters she wrote documenting the trips they were on, on vacation, on visits to friends, some of whom you've heard of or your parents or grandparents have, and some as cultural ambassadors sent by the State Department. First, from Travels with Charlie. When I was very young and the urge to be someplace else was on me, I was assured by mature people that maturity would cure this itch. When years described me as mature, the remedy prescribed was middle age, In middle age, I was assured that greater age would calm my fever, and now that I am 58, perhaps senility will do the job. Nothing has worked. Four horse blasts of a ship's whistle still raise the hair on my neck and set my feet to tapping. The sound of a jet, an engine warming up, even the clopping of shod hooves on pavement brings on the ancient shudder, the dry mouth and vacant eye, the hot palms and churn of stomach high up under the ribcage. In other words, I don't improve. In further words... Once a bum, always a bum. And then just a little bit later, For many years I have traveled in many parts of the world. In America I live in New York or dip into Chicago or San Francisco, but New York is no more America than Paris is France or London is England. Thus I discovered that I did not know my own country. I, an American writer, writing about America, was working from memory, and memory is at best a faulty, warpy reservoir. I had not heard the speech of America, smelled the grass and trees and sewage, seen its hills and water, its color and quality of light. I knew the changes only from books and newspapers. But more than this, I had not felt the country for 25 years. In short, I was writing of something I did not know about. And it seems to me that in a so-called writer, this is criminal. My memories were distorted by 25 intervening years. Now to the sale. Our guide is Charlie Potters, a consulting archivist who's organizing the materials for curated estates in New Jersey. We start with a trove of Elaine's snapshots. I'm going to guess he did not take them because he's in a lot of them. (laughs) So I'm guessing Elaine took the snaps. There's also mention in one of the letters that uh, one one of the things that, uh, no, these pictures are taken with my new Lycaflex, you know, and she puts what settings were on it. So she's the one who is chronicling everything. And if there are any notes on those black paper, if you see writing on any, it's either the writing that's on the envelope or what's written on the back of the picture. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I didn't editorialize anything. So this is what she said about the trips. Mm -hmm. So they went everywhere and she wrote everything down and took pictures of it all. Yeah. Everywhere. Pretty much. And now tell me again where you found snaps. The, the, The snaps were found at the bottom of a box filled with newspapers and old coupons and everything. And a, a very small envelope size boxed, you know, for, for a package of envelopes that's maybe, I mean, an inch and a half tall right. and three inches wide and nine inches long. Mm-hmm. And in there were all the envelopes and all the envelopes contained all of the pictures of all of their travels. Here's material from a 1952 trip to North Africa and Spain. Um, There's pictures of parties while they're there. Uh, Some of these people, I know who they are. Many of them I do not. 
And then, of course, they begin to look, you know, wherever there's – he's a big fan of architecture. Mm -hmm. He loves anything that has to do with the sort of architectural work. And so he's kind of looking at it. And then here's this map that was in the envelope, which for – I assume that when they kept things, they kept them for a reason. So you don't feel like they held on to everything or what? No, not at all. Uh, You know, in fact, they're very – they're very clearly – Things were Elaine kept things that that were in envelopes that had to do with the same trip. If there were papers or tickets or something, it's not like it was just that stuff was not just random. They very specifically kept things together, and you'll see that with more of the papers. So here, this is clearly Spain, right. and so they're saying to themselves, "Okay, we've landed here. We're going to go here. Here's a road map. You know, we're spoiled because we use." Our phones and ways for this stuff now, but this, you know, is the way to do it. Here no, we go. It's the, a map from the Spanish State Tourist Office on Madison Avenue. Yeah, and so they're like they're planning their trip, and mm-hmm. that's so. I felt it was important to sort of keep this stuff together because if they kept it together, I felt that I was important for me to right. keep it together. So that's that's an example of one of these folders, and we, as you can see, we have dozens of literally dozens of these. Now, this is a small one because there was only a few things. I just kept it because there's this one person here. But it's from their, when they were in this um, hotel in Paris. All right? That's the, the chambermaid and uh, the friend of theirs, Art Elliott, with them while right. they're on it. There's Frank Lesser all right, uh, in Paris with them. Um, so here's, you know, the, the thing is, is that when you've got this, what I then also did was there's a book called um, um, uh, Steinbeck, John Steinbeck, A Life in Letters, which uh, right. was published, and it's done by time. So because I have dates, mm-hmm. I can also go and see if he wrote any letters from that trip. This is from Moscow, say, and you can see here. Uh, I don't have my glasses on. Well, this just... is um, – And what does that say? Uh, that it's the Hotel great? Astoria in Leningrad. Dears, please address this to, uh, to uh, I think, Geo. I've gone wild over Leningrad. Moscow was a city, was such a disappointment to me. Impressive, da, but beautiful, uh, absolutely exciting or elegant, yet. Leningrad has the first elegance I've seen in the country. Wouldn't you know that the man who did it all did all the elegant buildings, the Winter Palace, Smolny, etc., was an Italian. He created a lovely Russian Baroque with the precious bit of Italian stirred in. Uh, we spent four hours at the Hermitage today and hope uh, to have much more time there. Uh, and then it goes on. I don't want to take the letter out, but you can right. see. So, okay. so this cool. and this is dated. She, she went in back and dated it November 10th, 1963. Now, this trip is important to us uh, to, for chronicling because um, they're on this great big trip to Poland and through Europe, and they are in uh, there when Kennedy is assassinated. Writing to London to John Emery and uh, Joan Bennett, forwarded to New York to the Wallensteins. It's looking our trip is to go on as scheduled now that Steinbeck has got that dear professor out of jail. He was doing something where he was – he does that a lot, where he's getting people – I've got lots of correspondence where he's getting – Artists and professors and whatnot, uh, intellectuals out of jail who've been arrested. I see that a lot in these trips. We are so tired. We would love to throw in the sponge, but of course we can't since our government and all the other governments have spent and are spending so many thousands of dollars on us. This is a, a, a trip from the State Department that they're on to sort of an, a cultural exchange and others in this exchange program. So we carry on as but we can 25 Days more, and then we come in London to see you and sit and laugh and drink, and there will be no necessity of toasts and the friendship of our own two countries. Now, this is the part that I like. We love the Poles. Uh, what, a, what a relief to be with people with a real sense of humor and a sense of the ridiculous. John and I had a meeting yesterday with 300 students at the university here, the fifth oldest university in the world, parenthetically, and we came away all picked up. Uh, uh, they were so free and full of fun, 
and with such keen minds and curiosity about the rest of the world, and so many beautiful girls, Papa flipped. You ought to get a load of me at the meetings with the students and writers. I'm getting almost as good as John at them. Only he says, I do wave the flag a bit much. Um, he says he wrote uh, one book about Charlie Dog. Uh, he writes anything about that trip. He should, if you're about this trip, uh, he should call it the political education of Elaine Steinbeck! Exclamation point. This whole thing is a killer for me, and I'm taking it hard. I feel I will talk your ear off and not be able to stop when I see you. Uh, Dan Shore, CBS in Warsaw, says he felt the same way when he first went back home, that he did get tired of trying to explain finally, and when on uh, when, when one, one DAR type started asking him questions, he merely said, hated the people, loved the system. <laughs> Okay. This is reflective of all their trips. They're always meeting, I mean, really interesting people. They're with great people all the time. And and so we have letters that document almost all these trips. And so this is a crazy sort of travelogue of John Steinbeck. And no one – now, everybody's, of course, seen John Steinbeck's letters because, A, they were published. Well, the letters, important yeah. ones were published. Right. And B, because he's John Steinbeck. And, of course, there are tons and tons of, of research facilities at universities around the country that are dedicated to John Steinbeck. But it's Elaine who's chronicling everything that they do. Right. She's his boss. Well, she said. Ab that's absolutely it. And I don't think people realize just how important these, you know, these letters uh, are from a travel point of view, from uh, the same thing with the pictures. You know, uh, we, we're just really, I mean, incredibly fortunate to have these. Some of them are, like, for example, he was in Vietnam in 1967. There's a picture of him in Vietnam in 1967, along with the letters that say what they were doing when they were on this trip at the various places in Bangkok. And she's detailing these uh, incredibly. And here's a cache Charlie Potter's found packed into a trumpet case. This is the scrapbook from when he won the Nobel Prize. Uh -huh. So the Nobel Prize is at Stanford, right? But in this trumpet case, in which we had, are all of the newspaper clippings. This is the pictures that were the official picture of from the Herald Tribune when he won the uh, when it was announced. But then these were the snaps that they just took in the office when they announced the Nobel Prize. So again, I you know. How do I know? There's the envelope. Okay. So, you know, document everything. Do we know who took the snaps? I do not know who took the snaps. I know that she might have taken some of them, may have gotten them from a friend. That, Elaine is in this one, but she's not in most of them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then there's this, what they... The newspaper now, advertise. so we have just for, the, for that, we have this, this group of letters and, and this whatnot. This is the Nobel Prize This is more section. or less the Nobel Prize section. Yes, this is, uh, yes, when you go to Stockholm, we'd love to see you in London. And, of course, here we go with Elaine's letter writing. All right. Libby, uh, this is Elaine giving her mom the blow-by-blow blow of uh, all the details about being having din dinner with the Swedish royal family after receiving the Nobel Prize. So this whole letter documents the whole evening and no one's seen this. Right. No one's ever, you know, this is, this is what they're actually doing. And this is just a letter that basically says, Dear Mommy, guess who we had dinner with? And she, we have letters to her mother from the 30s. She does this since she's a kid. She's a prolific letter writer. All her letters are multiple pages. And so these are the, the densest. And she's a great letter writer. She's a, she's a phenomenal writer. Uh, and maybe that may be one of the reasons that he was so attracted to her. She's, she's a very, she's got a very quick mind. It's Get Out of Here, more about the Steinbeck auction after a break. It's Get Out of Here, the AP Travel Podcast. I'm Warren Levinson. We talked a couple of weeks ago with Charlie Potters of Curated Estates about an upcoming auction of materials from John and Elaine Steinbeck, a large part of it being her letters. This is from a visit to someone Elaine had known from her childhood in Texas, Lady Bird Johnson. It's on White House stationery. Right. And it's dated 
August 24th, 1964. And again, it, to Mrs. F. Right. W. Anderson. And this is, and I, I did this so that you could see it. This is a one, two, three, four page letter on White House stationery. This is a short one. But you have to, I, I, this was just in there. This is why you have to read everything. Mm -hmm. Dear Mother, thought you'd like a letter from the White House. Ha ha. It's nine in the morning. We've just had a delicious breakfast brought in, parenthetically. It tastes like Texas cooking. And John is in our little sitting room working. He worked till 4.30 this morning, last night, and is hard at it again. In a few minutes, I'm going downstairs to Bird, meaning either Linda or Lady Bird, one of the two, looking at the dresses she is taking to the convention. And then Linda Bird and I are going out shopping in a White House car to buy some shoes and bags for Bird and some things for Linda. I told her last night I didn't want to sit idle, and she jumped at my offer to help. She is trying to get her desk cleaned up before going to the convention. They are all going on Wednesday. John mentioned to the president last night we were to go home tonight, and he said, no, uh, please, we're, we weren't going till the speech was settled. So I'm sure we will uh, be here until tomorrow. We had one time getting here and we got to the east hampton airport at five yesterday afternoon this is a good travel part the fog started rolling in we could hear the motors of our charter plane up above us but he couldn't see us to get down so by radio we agreed to rendezvous at kennedy airport in new york as soon as we could get there and there we went in a one motor four water four seater plane i'd never been in that one that little before but it was fun as soon as we got over Sag Harbor, it was clear as a bell. We flew right over our house. Uh, then at Kennedy, we got with, uh, with our two-motor, four-seater, two pilots this time, and flew to Washington. Got here about nine, two hours late, and at White House, car was waiting for us. The Johnsons had waited dinner for us, bless them, and after a much-appreciated drink of scotch, we sat down in the president's dining room at about ten. John and I didn't even take time to change our clothes. But Linda was in a robe, bird in slacks, and the president in ranch clothes. So you see, it didn't matter. They have so few moments to be informal in this job. I love being in this wonderful house that is so full of history. I could hardly go to sleep last night thinking of the great people who have lived here. We have a pretty suite on the third floor looking out over the front of the White House toward Pennsylvania Avenue, a big switch. This time we took look toward our hotel instead of vice versa. Uh, I'm writing at a wonderful old desk. Mrs. Kennedy, in her uh, redecoration scheme, filled every room with authentic furniture. On the walls of each side are five old drawings of James Madison and Jefferson and a tiny little frame and an old invitation from George Washington to a Mr. Van Allen inviting him to the White House in 1797. Wouldn't our daddy love knowing I was here? What John is doing, of course, is writing on the president's acceptance speech. But that is confidential. That is something you just don't talk about. And, of course, others are waiting on it, too. So it will be, in the end, a work of several. In fact, all that I write from here is confidential. It would be awful, for instance, if any, about uh, it would be uh, in the papers. Uh, uh, may uh, take us with, they take us with the bosom of the family, expecting us not to talk about private things. Just told our friends Jack and uh, the Fishers and John was doing some work for the president and that we're staying at the White House. Uh, so you say that if you say anything. Must go now. Love you, Elaine. Cool. I mean, so I don't know whether... Did, did we know, did, was it known before that he worked on, on LBJ's convention speech? Uh, I don't speech have any speech? record of it on the, on the ether web. Uh, whether or not it's known, I don't know. But in this letter, which is why you're seeing hundreds of letters here, I have to read the letters because they have stuff like that in them. By the way, though a cursory Internet search does not turn up the connection of Steinbeck to the LBJ convention speech, 
it is known to Johnson and Steinbeck scholars. All of them have something, some kernel that has not been known or might be only thinly known. And so, and when it comes to sort of travels, I mean, here, this is when they went to Israel. So here's, this is, they were in Israel uh, in uh, 1963. And the mayor of Jerusalem, Teddy Kollek. Right. All right. Uh, he, they have uh, dinner with him, uh, and he says on a little on the back of that it says, "Welcome back to Jerusalem." Here, uh, there's a, a this artist uh, Parviz uh, Amid, Aminzade, all right, makes this portrait, portrait of him. It's a watercolor portrait. Fourteenth of December, nineteen sixty-three. Yeah, uh, with a with a note on the back. There are actually it's it's basically a new portrait of Steinbeck that never that hasn't existed before. So. And then I put in, you know, this is the, of course, Steinbeck comes to, 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 to Jerusalem. It's big news. So it hits right. the papers. So we have right. to include that. Um, he's got a, a good friend of his uh, is an artist named Bo uh, Besko. Mm -hmm. And he is Swedish. So now he goes to uh, Sweden for the, there's a trip to Sweden for the Nobel Prize. Nobel Prize. Mm -hmm. But in 1957, there's this trip to Sweden that they've been invited to to go to uh, the Midsummer Festival. In, and so uh, these pictures, which, again, I don't think have been seen by anybody, all right, are in Skane, Skane, I think I'm pronouncing it right, Sweden in 1957 during the festival. Uh, he's got a pipe in his mouth instead of the ubiquitous cigarette. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but then we also have, beginning in February 1956, the letters from Bo Besco that says, "Love, glad that you're going to come. You know, this is going to be great. You're going to, uh, you know, we're going to set you up. You're going to stay here." And there are two letters now. One of the things which is very useful, we have these letters from his friend Bo. Mm -hmm. Um, in the book, La, La, John Steinbeck, A Life of Letters, life, 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 you yeah. see the letters that go out to him. So in other words, if you wanted a complete understanding of their travels, you see the outbound letters written by John, but you don't see a lot of the inbound letters to John. Mm -hmm. So you know what John wrote, but you don't necessarily know what he's responding to. So in the case of this trip... We have a much better picture of like the planning of how it all transpired, what Bo Besco is asking okay. him, you know, when they're going to go, and so you know it's 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 really a fa this is my favorite picture. This has nothing to do with travel, but this is if I could buy any picture. <laughs> First off, that's that is all right a, a, a standard poodle, yeah. which I do have an affinity for standard poodles because I like standard poodles. I have two, but this is not just a standard poodle. This oh, Charlie. Cool. So anybody who likes the sto the book travels with Charlie. That's Charlie. That is his beloved Charlie in uh, in New York, uh, out in a field. Charlie and Valentine, which is another dog. Uh, so I I just I mean that's <laughs> that's, that's great. So I mean as far as travel goes, I mean he wrote a whole book about traveling with Charlie. There's Charlie. <laughs> There's a lot of traveling to see friends. A lot of this has to do around. We're going with this couple and that couple to their house or to at this hotel where we're all going to stay together. This is a ve they're very, very social people. So these many trips, remember, they're married in 1950, December of 1950. He dies December of 1968. Whatever you see here, which is from that point where that box is, right. all the way around here, and on all these other tables is 18 years. So all of these trips, but again, is John Steinbeck. Right. He's an emissary to the world. He's a cultural ambassador to the world of the United States. So it's not unreasonable that he's traveling. But the thing is, the part of this, which is a love story, is he's always traveling with her. Charlie Potters is a consulting archivist working on the auction of John and Elaine Steinbeck materials at Curated Estates in New Jersey, February 27th. Among the other items in the sale, a small gold-colored medallion of hers, 
a present from when she was stage manager for Oklahoma on Broadway. The giver, whose signature is etched on it, is Dick, Dick being Richard Rogers, and a hummingbird made out of colorful thread wrapped around a stick stored in a leather coffin Steinbeck made. He once wrote it was given to him by a witch doctor and contains just about all the magic in the world. And one more bit from Travels with Charlie, advice on starting up conversations with strangers on the road. The techniques of opening conversation are universal. I knew long ago and rediscovered that the best way to attract attention, help, and conversation is to be lost. A man who, seeing his mother starving to death on a path, kicks her in the stomach to clear the way, will cheerfully devote several hours of his time giving wrong directions to a total stranger who claims to be lost. And that's the show. Get Out of Here is a production of the Associated Press in partnership with Westwood One, produced under the supervision of Nikessa Moody and Peter Costanzo. I'm Warren Levinson. We'll see you next time.